gone from this to this in just two days. How did we do it? A whole lot of work and not a lot of sleep. But before we get started, I know it's been a while since I last posted. If you're interested, I'll talk about that more at the end of the video. But for now, welcome back to the channel, everyone. This is the postmortem for a game jam game that I made recently called Gone Viral. You can see it on the screen right now. It's a puzzle platformer where you play as a virus trying to escape a hospital. It may or may not be related to certain current events. The puzzle aspect comes in when you have to leverage a number of different DNA mutations that modify viruses to help you get around the level. For those of you not familiar with the jam format, uh, I made this game for a game jam. Basically, it's a mini competition where you attempt to make a game according to a theme, along with a bunch of other game developers, in a short amount of time. It's a great way for game devs to get their juices flowing and, you know, actually finish something for once. Uh, and since it's a short amount of time, you can kind of just have fun and not really worry about making something good. If it sounds hard, it definitely is, but it's also a nice way to just have fun with game development and make a low stakes project that isn't expected to be good. Of course, doing well in a jam is great, but more importantly than that, it's an opportunity to try some new things. Here were the things I wanted to try this jam. First, work on a team. I make almost all my games alone, but for this jam, I actually had a friend join me. I really wanted to open up to the idea of collaborating and sharing creative freedom with someone else. That's scary for someone that usually works alone, but I wanted to try that for this jam. Secondly, make all of the assets. While this jam let us use outside assets, we really wanted to make all the art for this game ourselves. This adds to the challenge, but it also makes you feel like you really crafted this world, this whole game, kind of like from your own brain. And that's a really satisfying feeling. Anyway, without further ado, here's the story of how I made this cute little game in just 48 hours. So 8pm on Friday the theme gets released, and for this jam, the theme that got the most votes is Mutation. Immediately my partner and I got to work thinking about all the cool things we could do with the game. Some of the cooler ones were an idea where you, you were some sort of like dog sitter for this like alien pet, and it constantly mutates into different hazards that you have to respond to before it destroys the whole house. So maybe like sets stuff on fire or shoots lizard beams. Uh, if any of you have seen like Jack-Jack from The Incredibles, it was very much inspired by that. But yeah, probably a bit too chaotic. Another idea was to start off as a basic character, trying to get to the end of the level, but in order to do so, you have to collect different DNA points that modify your character. You could add different legs to run faster, or maybe add wings to let you jump higher, things like that. The idea that finally stuck though was inspired by a game that we both loved called Badland. It's a wacky mobile game where you have to control these little animal things and herd them to the end of the level with a bunch of mutations. The mutations modify these things to make them smaller, sticky, faster, all these sorts of things, and those combine in really interesting ways. We thought we would make something similar, but rather than it being a side-scrolling mobile game, our game would be a platformer, where all the slimes can move all over the level. So, with that idea in mind, uh, we just ran with it. We uh, started designing all the different mutations that they would have to fit with the theme of mutation for this jam. So, here they are. Some were borrowed from Badlands, like the grow and shrink mutations. These make the characters grow in size and make them smaller. Uh, the smaller ones can fit into small crevices and explore different places, and the big ones are sometimes helpful for like blocking gaps. Another mutation swapped gravity, giving some viruses anti-gravity to reach high up places. Other mutations made viruses metallic, so while most viruses floated in water and died when they came in contact with these little spike things, metallic viruses sank in water and were immune to spike damage, so that opened up some interesting pathways there. Uh, my favorite mutation though is probably the most important, it's a cloning mutation that copies viruses that come in contact with it. This includes any mutations it already has. For example, a small virus will clone into another small virus, and a metallic virus will clone into another metallic virus. Anyway, by the end of day one, here's what we had. Yep, pretty much nothing. <laughs> a lot of the work for uh, the first day since it started so late and it started at 8pm was just planning. So we you know, wrote everything down on paper and we're ready to get started on day two with the actual code. Alright, so day two. With these pretty limited set of mutations, we had a surprisingly complex task code-wise actually. We wanted all the mutations to be able to work together, meaning that a virus could be any number of mutations at once, like it could be large, metallic, and anti-gravity. Not to mention we also had to set up uh, all the typical platformer things besides mutations, like moving, collisions, jumping, so that's a whole grab bag of things to code, and we spent most of day two pretty much doing exactly that, just coding. Over the Jam's Discord voice channel, we actually got to meet a bunch of other game developers from the Jam, and that was super fun. If you're one of those developers and are actually watching this video now, hey, uh, leave a comment below so I can say hi. Um, it was super nice meeting all of you. 
there's not really much else to share here. Um, here's the demo that we had at the end of day two. It doesn't look like much, but like I said, a lot of code went into this, uh, and of course, a ton of bug fixing as well. And after a hard day of work, um, this was the this was the working physical prototype. It still had a long way to go before it was a true game, but it was good progress, and we were confident we had one day left that we could complete the game. So day three, despite getting pretty far the day before, we still had a lot more to tie up on the last day. Uh, the biggest task of all was to obviously put all of the graphics into the game. So right now we have basically a bare bones, like proof of concept. It works, but it doesn't look good, like at all, as much as I like this cute little pink guy. So uh, we need a real character, not to mention a tile set that would replace all these lame blue rectangles. So day three was basically just a bunch of art and game design. So while day two was code, day three was all, you know, pixel art. Uh, luckily, my teammate had stayed up the night before and um, was able to design our character as well as a bunch of DNA pickups that represented each of the mutations with the different colors. So to match that, I got to work on a tile set. It's supposed to look like a hospital, but you know, I guess it just came out this sort of like cute blue. So here's uh, a time lapse of me doing that. After all of the art came a bunch of level design, the process of actually designing levels that make the player think and use the mutation mechanic in interesting ways. I think a good metaphor is that Day two was spent giving the player all the tools, so writing all the code that would actually create an interesting world. Uh, day three was all about making that world and uh, giving them interesting problems to solve using those tools. My favorite puzzle mechanic that came out of this design is actually ordering mutations in different ways. Here's how that works. So depending on how you pick up the mutations, you can actually come out with different viruses. For example, let's say you have a metallic DNA and two clone DNAs. You could pick up the metallic first and then clone twice. That would leave you with three metallic viruses. Or you could clone twice first and then pick up the metallic DNA at the end, leaving you with just one metallic virus and two normal ones. Depending on what the level requires, one combination might be better than the other, and you have to think about all the different ways that you can order your mutations to come out with what you want. I thought it was pretty cool. Level design had to come last though, so we ended up only having just a few hours before submission to design levels. We came up with fewer than I would have hoped for, but at 8pm on the third day, we did submit a fully complete demo of Gone Viral to DGM number 5, another jam in the books. In regards to my two goals, I had a blast during this jam. Getting to work with someone on a game was a new experience for me, and it made some of the parts of game design that I really hate uh, a lot more bearable. I know I couldn't have made a game like this alone, so I'm super grateful to have worked with someone on this one. In regards to making all the assets, we did that too. Minus the music, we were able to craft this entire game from our own minds, so that means all the code and all the art and all the level design. If you want to play Gone Viral, there's a link down in the description. You can play in browser on pretty much any computer, so you know, go check it out. <laughs> Leave me a comment if you're from the YouTube channel, um, and I'll get back to you about what you thought. Uh, and if you haven't done a game gem before and you've always wanted to, consider this your push to go try one. My advice is to go in with goals about what you want to get out of the GM. So for me, that was working with the team and challenging myself to make all of the assets instead of using any outside art. I advise you to go in with some goals about what you want to learn and then just go for it. And let me know how it goes if you decide to do one. If you're new to the channel, feel free to subscribe. I'm a game developer and all the content I post is game dev related. You can see more of my game jam postmortems or check out my long term project, which I am currently devlogging as well. And leave a like on this video, no matter if you're new to the channel or not, it really helps me out a ton. Anyway, this has been the making of Gone Viral. Thanks y'all. Hey, if you're a long-term subscriber, I know this has been my first video in a while, and I want to thank you for sticking around. Don't worry, I'm still game developing in earnest, which I plan to keep doing for a while. But the truth of YouTube is that it takes a long time to make these videos, and that's time I'd usually rather spend just doing what I love, which is making games. I'll still be uploading to this channel when it feels right, but I don't want to promise anything in terms of an upload schedule right now. I do have some cool ideas planned, like in terms of maybe doing a live stream. I think in the past, an upload schedule actually became bad for my game development because what I was doing was trying to make stuff that would be good for a video rather than actually good for a game. So I think moving forward, I'm going to try to focus really hard on game development and then post videos when it feels right and I actually have a lot to update you guys on. Hopefully that'll mean better content for all of you and mean that I still have time to make great games. And all of you who have stuck around and have been asking for videos, I hear you and hope that this one did you well. All of your support really means the world to me, and I'm so, so grateful for all of my subs, truly. So until next video, whenever that is, this is Kale Chips Dev, signing off. Thanks y'all.